Hi, I'm Sean, and I like to consume media. So the Wheel of Time teaser trailer came out yesterday. And let's just say that my reaction to it was somewhat... Oh my god! Appropriate. But I'm not here to talk about the trailer because as far as I'm concerned that's already been covered by plenty of other YouTubers, some far more knowledgeable about the world of the Wheel of Time than I. Instead, what I want to focus on is something else that happened yesterday in the world of the Wheel of Time um, that I don't see anyone really talking about. And this uh, relates to a Twitter or Instagram, whatever you want to call it, Q&A that um, Rafe Judkins, the, the showrunner, and Rosamund Pike, who is playing um, Moiraine, had. And this Q&A kind of gives a, a good bit of insight. It's kind of a good kind of companion piece to the trailer because it gives us insight into uh, what we've already seen and gives us a little bit more kind of teasers about what to expect with the structure of the first season of The Wheel of Time. So yeah, I'm gonna get started on this, and before I do, just wanna give a light spoiler warning. I will be talking about things, uh, elements of book one, book two, and also book three. So if you've not read those books, don't watch this video, okay? That's all I can tell you. I won't be going into massive spoilers, but I'll be talking about elements, and if you wanna go in as blind as possible, then don't, okay. So the first uh, question comes from this user and they say, how do you expect us to work today? Uh, Rafe says, don't, I'm your, if I'm your boss, you have the day off. And then Rosamund, as, a, as you expect her, you know, very true to her character says, I expect you to focus and do your best as always. Sincerely, headmistress. And you know, I can't disagree that Moraine definitely has like serious headmistress vibes, especially in the earlier Wheel of Time books. So this next question, the user asks, for both Rosamund and Rafe, how do the final visuals with completed visual effects align with what you had in mind when reading the script slash filming on location? And Rosamund says, It's so important to have a living, vivid world inside your imagination. When you are shooting sequences that will be completed with CGI and the production, have always made sure that we have plenty of visual references for, for how things would look as we went along. We've never worked on a set on which at least part of the world is not built. We've always had elements of the texture and atmosphere of the finished world to work with. That's some pretty good news. They're sort of mixing practical effects with, with, with visual effects and that's sort of part and parcel of, of, of modern sort of filmmaking. There's always gonna be that mixture of, of, of visual and practical and that's kind of when it's at its best. Um, even some, some of the best CGI out there is a CGI that you don't even notice. And then Rafe says, making a TV show at its best is about collaboration, about seeing how your initial vision for something is lifted and changed and made better by the people around you. So my favorite visuals in the show are the ones that are far better than I'd ever imagined with writing the script. And I really like that answer from, from Rafe. He's the showrunner and he um, he's so, shown so much passion for this project over the last couple of years. And the fact that he's 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 you know, sort of humble enough to say, you know, listen, the best visual effects are the ones that were the ones that were someone came along and did a far better job than you know I had originally envisioned. So that's quite exciting and uh, great to see that there is this kind of healthy sort of working and collaborative uh, relationship within the the Wheel of Time production team. This user asks a pretty important question: Can we get some information on the composer or the score for the show? Rafe says, if Amazon lets this answer go through, this is me proudly announcing that we have the most incredible composer working on the show by the name of Lorne Balf. You've gotten a tiny hint of his music with the reveal of the logo and what he's doing is really special. This is pretty interesting. It confirms one thing, uh, that the music in the trailer probably isn't going to be what's going to be used in the show as trailer music very rarely is it's always like a production team that does like a you've got to hit those beats in the trailer you know with with, with, with the music he helped compose the dark knight he um was the main composer for new mission impossible it's all it's, he's working on all those uh penguins of madagascar so a very very diverse uh, portfolio there and the the wee snippet of music we got in in the reveal of the logo uh, was very very moody and seemed to fit the tone of, of what they're going with in the show so let's see what we have this next question is, is just for Rosamund only and this person is asking how different is acting in a high fantasy tv show from your previous work and Rosamund says the biggest most important challenge with fantasy is making the stakes your own making the concepts and ideas that are so outside 
our own experience feel real and immediate? And that's a, a very interesting answer because from what we've seen of Rosamund Pike in her previous roles, um, she she plays very sort of realistic characters in realistic settings. For example, Amy Dunn in Gone Girl, where she's playing a very in a very grounded setting, and and, and so it seems that Ro Rosamund is the kind of actress who who kind of values that and values making things personable to herself. So to see that she's applying that same kind of uh, ideal to playing a fantasy character is very exciting because it means that the performance we'll get from Moraine will be as real as the performance we got for Amy Dunn. Hopefully slightly less, you know, murdery and psychotic. Okay, this question is, is very interesting. Uh, how much of the Morrow trial is practical effects? Now we saw the Morrow trial in the trailer and uh, yeah, just gonna put that up on screen there. It's, um, it's, uh, it's nightmare fuel. And, Ra and Rafe says, Rand, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Rafe says, the Muradral, like almost all elements in the show, is as much practical as we could manage, enhanced by VFX. I always think that it gives a more disturbing and real feeling quality than full VFX creatures. I like this answer because it means that, so the Wheel of Time um, has so many different creatures. It's really a creature feature of, 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 a, of a fantasy series. You've got you know, Moradral, Trollocs, Ogier, Draghar, um, Grom, um, Flying Beasts, and so if 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 they can really combine the best of both worlds being, you know, practicality to give that physical, tangible feel, and the VFX to like enhance features like, for example, the Moradral's nightmare shark mouth, then we're in for a real treat with this show. Uh, next question, uh, it's not really relevant to, to, to much but in the show, but I like it. It's, uh, what do you think Moraine's favourite food is? And number two, do you, she prefer coffee or tea? And Rosamund says, I don't think Moraine cares too much about food. Rafe thinks she likes buffalo wings. She, eat, she eats to live, but don't worry, you'll only ever see her drink tea. Very good, keeping Moraine uh, British, I guess, and I suppose whatever British would be in the, in the world of the Wheel of Time. And then Rafe simply says, buffalo wings. Will we get a scene? At some point, maybe maybe Rosamond will will kind of kowtow to, to Rafe's demands, and we will see maybe season two. Uh, you know, Moraine just going to town on a bowl of buffalo wings. Maybe she'll do one of those bloody uh, hot one challenges with with your man. That would be fantastic. Let's do that. Let's 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 just take the show off the rails. So, question here. Um, for Rosamond, how do you feel seeing Mar Moraine's powers visually for the first time? So we saw uh, the one power in the trailer. And uh, some of it looked okay, but then the, the final kind of sh shot with Moraine sort of weaving at to rain lightning down on the Trollocs, was, that looked really, really good. I was, I was a big fan of that. And Rosamund says, very simply, I felt like a badass. I said to Rafe when I first saw it, I need this video of me shooting fireballs to show my sons again and again. Yes. And also, I think we all need that video of Rosamund shooting fireballs because I want to I want to see a fireball come out of her hand. Please, let me see that. Uh, a question about the rating of the show is next. So what is the show going to be rated? Will people be able to watch it with their teenagers? And Rafe says, people should certainly be able to watch with their teenagers. So clearly it's not going for a hard R. It will probably go for like a PG-13. And you can get away with a lot with PG-13. I don't even know if television and film ratings align, but I think, listen, we're, we're not gonna get, we're gonna get gore. Absolutely, we're gonna get gore. But we're not, we probably won't get nudity to the level of something like Game of Thrones. So as long as there is plenty of gore and not much nudity, I think they can stretch that kind of PG-13 rating. But, um, but what Rafe could also be inferring is that people should certainly be able to watch it with their teenagers. So it means, you know, teenagers are a bit older, uh, you know, you're 13 to 17, you've, you've got a bit more of a tolerance for, for blood, guts and nudity. So, you know, uh, let's see where it goes. <laughs> What I'm saying is I want to see Trolloc hanged on. So this next question is, is, is a really good question. How are we able to come up with how the weaving of the one power looks? And Rosamund says, I needed to feel that you would believe Moraine had this power. If there were no visual effects, the most important thing for me was that I felt connected to something greater than myself. Robert Jordan is so eloquent about what it feels like to channel. The feeling of the one power fills your veins. The risk of it, the risk of drawing too much and the necessity of respecting it and being trained to use it. Uh, that's a, I, I'm really impressed with that answer from, from, from Rosamond. I don't know, I'm not gonna be patronizing. What I mean is like, she, she, she really is into this and I, that's just so great to see. 
that she's not just there collecting a paycheck like you know you'd fear that a named actor would be doing that she's here she's in this to the end so i'm looking forward to it um but also what she's saying about the one power in the books is very true it's the way robert jordan writes about the one power it, it's all quite internal what the characters feel when they're weaving the one power there's not necessarily any indication of like an external well there is in some cases but of like an external power being seen by others um or other non-magic users but i think to translate how it feels for the characters and put it into a visual medium is the way to go and again like i said in the scenes where it looks good it looks really good and Rafe says, all of the VFX teams looking at the one power were going up documents and descriptions of it pulled straight from the books and use that as jumping off points. Uh, way to go. So this next question uh, is for Rosamond and it asks, what's her favorite Moraine speech? And uh, Rosamond simply says, Moraine can be very silent, so when she speaks, we listen. That's true, Moraine doesn't talk too much, but when she talks, she, she has something to say, it's something worthwhile. In the books, it's the weep from Anatheran speech, the idea that in the people of the two rivers the old blood runs deep and it certainly does run deep uh, in future books definitely and that we for man and theron speech if they can get that that, that that more or less means it's going to be in in, in the show and i'm looking forward to seeing that because um it really elevated for me as a character in the books when she get that speech this next question is to the point can you bring the release date back a bit to like tomorrow or something yeah absolutely and rosabend says ask rafe and rafe says ask amazon so this next question is asking, how excited are you to see your audience's responses after such a long wait? And Rosamund says, I love how warm and welcoming the Wheel of Time fan base have been. I hope we offer escape, excitement, mystery, and something to keep people inspired through the end of the year. That's a nice answer, just about like, I mean, the community is the community is very welcoming. I've, I've, I've never uh, experienced uh, such a community that's that's lacks toxicity. Well, in some respects, every, every community has a toxic elements. Um, and I hope that as the fan base grows, it keeps that kind of like, the, the, the fan base should be like the two rivers, stubborn, but kind of wholesome. That's what I want. That's what I want. But the, but that's how I want the fan base to remain. And Ray's answer is, is very honest. He says, this is a complicated thing because as a fan of many epic book series, seeing them brought to life is simultaneously thrilling and a little bit sad as it changes forever a world that you saw in your own head while reading. And this is this is the the thing with with adaptations. No matter how well a, some, a film, TV show adapt, adapts a book, like Lord of the Rings, like Harry Potter, a filmmaker or with, with a unlimited budget cannot compete with the reader's imagination. And unfortunately, you're going to lose some of that with the show. And things you saw as more grand more epic will look less so because of obviously constraints with budgets and, and and what people are capable of creating especially the way characters look like um uh, i remember reading the, the the first wheel of time book and before i even saw any of the cast members i had a picture in my head of them and then when i saw the marine video and then i saw the land video that was just my default from from now on but uh, like i said the uh the, the characters are are very well cast and I'm looking forward to see their performances. I'm quite ahead now in the books of where season one will end, so I'm there's new characters and I'm I'm giving them my own little Sean imaginings of what they look like. This user asks, which location was your favorite to film at? Specifically in the show and in real life. And Rosamond says, the world inside the walls of Shader Logoth is particularly affecting and eerie. Our production designer created a powerful sinister set for the abandoned desolate city. But for me as an actor, the city of Taravalan was so rich, it was built from the ground up with the most intricate detail. It is stunning. Very good. And we see O'Shadow Logoth and Taravalan in the trailer in a very good detail. And Taravalan looks very beautiful. Although one thing I did note was kind of how empty Taravalan looks. I hope they add a little like, like pixel people running around or something. Uh, here's a question, a potentially spoilery where someone asks, is the scene with Egwene in the water about her one power slash wisdom testing? And we see that in, at the very start of the trailer where Nynaeve is like, be strong, and just yeets Egwene into the river. Not in the books. Um, so we don't know what's, what's going on there. And Ray says, I can answer that question at the end of the season. So we will see that on December 24th when the final episode of season one airs. We'll, we'll get that answer. And I'm holding you to that, Rafe Judkins. This is a very interesting uh question and, a, and an even more interesting answer how much will season one cover book one or spread across several looks amazing and rafe says season one will, will cover book one plus some of book two and even book three 
but also not all of book one, as some of it is in season two. Cryptic enough? What is happening here is we're pretty much confirming that the Wheel of Time is being adapted as a whole, as a sum of its parts, essentially, rather than individual books. So this is contentious now. Uh, it can go either, it can go two ways. Either the pacing is is brilliant and it all makes sense, or things that should have happened don't happen in a later season and then it's kind of inconsistent. But I feel like the world of the Wheel of Time is so big, and especially in Book One Eye of the World, everything is constrained to one character's viewpoint. And I think it's a good idea to give a, a modern audience and trusted audience with a bigger scope. So I think giving them elements of book two, and I guess book three, um, is, is, is probably important to do. And we even see that, I mean, there's characters, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, uh, Suan Sanchez, Leandrin, Tarvalon itself, they're not in book one, they're in book two. Now what's happening in book three, I'm not really sure about. I don't think anything plot-wise is going to happen in, from book three. I think concept-wise. And I'm going to say what I think um, is going to come from book three will be very simply mentions of Kalimdor and mentions of Tel Aran Riyadh, uh, which is the Sword of the Zanah Sword and the World of Dreams. I think they will, those can't, they're going to bring those plot points forward because I've, as, as Rape Drop had said at the Comic-Con panel, this is going to be an ensemble show. It is not focused on one particular character. Um, it's focused on an ensemble, so bringing these things forward a, a season or two probably is the best way to go about that, but we'll see how it pays off. Oh, whoops, yeah, there's actually, sorry, there's a last, there, there's a question I missed. Will there be a second trailer? Rafe says, yes, and longer. What's the thing you'd like to see most in it? Uh, interesting, longer, by how, like a minute, two minutes, how long is the trailer going to be, Rafe? What do I want to see in it most? Okay, two things. A trollic. His face, whatever. I want to see Trollic. Number two is Loyal. My boy Loyal. I want to see him. A, a split second shot, I don't care. I want to know what the show's interpretation of an old year is going to be. Give us that, please, Rafe. And also, uh, also just give us an extended trailer, which happens to also be the entire series. Just give us that. And I think we're, ki we're kind of square. Yeah. So there, that's, that's the Q&A. That's it, the Q&A. Is, uh, is over and some very good questions there and give us some good insights into the production of the show, the structure it's taking and the personal feelings of both Rosamund Pike and Rafe Jerkins about the work that they're doing. They seem to be both very impassioned about what they're doing and hope and I hope and I think it will translate into the show we see on November 19th is the release date for The Wheel of Time. The first three episodes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it uh, entertaining and informative. Please leave a like or a comment subscribe if, if you feel like it. Now, anyway, I've got to go off and consume some more media, so catch you later.